Hey everybody, HMV here, playing more Kerbal Space Program, and we are at Moho. Well, we're not at Moho, we are very close to Moho. Uh, we are a mere three hours from not only insertion into Moho orbit, but also our 204 meter per second burn that's going to get our um, Moho periapsis down to something respectable. Periapsis is going down when it gets to about 40 or so. I'm going to stop burning. 45. Let's get it down to under 40. We're not going to be over 100. We might as well get it under 40. Okay. Now this burn is probably a little bit less than it needs to be now. It says it's a 2 minute and 44 second burn, but it's going to be a bit less than that because we are going to be tossing this fuel tank after we burn 873 meters per second. So after the first minute and 8 seconds, we're going to have to toss the fuel tank. So we're probably going to we're probably going to want to start at the at the same time. And the important thing is is we need to stop for a second, spin, toss this thing aside and then spin back, as I like to do. So I think I'm going to start about a minute and 25, no matter what the uh, what the thing says. We are lowering our periapsis, but not significantly. Okay, we are almost ready for three, two, one, mark. We're going to spin, stage, spin back, and throttle up again. Not quite in Moho's orbit yet, but we're getting close. The moment we do get in Moho's orbit, I want to stop the burn. Oh, there we go. We're in Moho's orbit. Yay! And our periapsis is 37, which is perfectly fine. We can, we can correct our inclination with no problems. Let's head back to the Space Center. Because we should have a contract now. Investigate a geological formation on Moho. Accepted. We're not going to do any of these, though, so never mind. And, uh, oh, we got some stuff here. Eh, who cares about that? Okay, so the geological formation is quite a bit on the north. Um, no, because it, it's not just quite a bit on the north. It's, it's the Mohol. So let's go ahead and add a maneuver here. And then add a maneuver here to slow down. And that is 65 meters per second and 280, which is 3, whatever, 345. So yeah, we're going to be almost out of fuel. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to have like 400 meters per second left in the orbiter. And then the other ship's got to go down. And obviously that's not going to happen for a while. Um, never mind, it's going to happen in a day. So let's go ahead and do it. I thought this orbit would take a lot more than a day. There we go. Let's go ahead and snap this at our periapsis, make sure everything's good. I think that is perfectly reasonable. 36 by 42. It's fine by me. But it's not the next thing to happen. We're gonna do the we're gonna do the Duna atmospheric entry, then we're gonna jump back to this guy. That's crazy. Okay. Are we ready? I'm not. I don't know about you. I actually drag this maneuver node forward three minutes. This is 22 minutes. This is 24 minutes. So if we actually put this maneuver node, I don't actually want to use the maneuver node. If we put this maneuver node here, which it's not. Oh, I hate that. Let's just plop a new one right here. Um, then we're going to, we're going to come, we're going to come out of warp, like right around here somewhere. So we can watch. Ooh, I love that shadow. And we want to aim retrograde. We have entered suborbital space flight over Moho. Oh, we were for a second, apparently in suborbital. Which is fine. Oh look, there's there's one of our anomalies. 
Okay, and basically, uh, you know what? I'm going to hit F5 here because I don't, I don't know for a fact that I'm going to want to burn the engine. Um, but I am, I'm going to burn the engine, but I don't know if that's the smart thing to do because... Uh, we could end up we could end up uh, suborbital. This guy is so crazy looking. I do not trust anything the trajectories mod tells me. But as soon as we get to let's see, we've got a 16 second burn. Yeah, see, aerodynamics is kind of pushing him nose down, and there's nothing he can do about it. Maybe we should just toss the engine. Maybe we should just toss the engine, or maybe we'll. Maybe we'll spin around one entire spin and then <laughs> hit the gas, but no, that's not going to happen. So, and I also want to hold on to it just in case this doesn't, uh, this doesn't completely stop us. I might want to use it. Although it seems to be, trajectory seems to be very sure that we're coming down. Oh, we're also heating up. I don't know why I expected this to, uh, you know what? We shouldn't have the, we shouldn't have the, SAS on at all. I don't know why I expected this to be the heavy end. The good thing is, is we could burn up if we had to, but I don't think we're I don't think we're gonna have to worry about that. I think we're already past periapsis. So yeah, just for for ease of of ship, whatever, I'm gonna toss this thing. Yeah, we're officially in orbit. Oh, this is scary. Please don't crash into me. <clears throat> oh, that's cute. <laughs> Random Ike encounter. Yeah, this is looking pretty good. Now, what I want to do is I want to get this guy into an orbit, uh, into low orbit, so that we can just sit here in orbit until we come over one of these guys, probably this guy, considering how equatorial we are. I don't think we ever get far enough north to be to be on this guy, although I think this guy's on a lower, lower area. However, I don't think that matters because we got to land at both of them anyway. And we have more mass landing landing at the first one, but we're going to toss all these parachutes as well. So we, we've got about the same amount of parachuteness. And yep, it looks like we have not died, which I'm going to say is good. And uh, the trajectories mod definitely did not know what to do with our ship. Um, it uh, it was it was long, and I'm going to take that into account. And I'm also going to happily. Arrow or not arrow break. Um, quick save. Every single time we've got 47 minutes before our burn. This is an hour from now, so this is going to be the next thing that we do. And I think actually I'm going to not burn up. I'm going to burn down a little bit to give us a little bit more of this. I think that's a good idea. Kind of sucks that the north end of northern end of it is over here. We're probably going to wait for this to rotate around, and we're also going to give it a little bit of prograde. We can always dip back into the atmosphere if we need to. I think 56 is perfect. Um, this is 84.9 meters per second, and we really can't spend much more than this, this 379. If I wanted to slow down here, just out of curiosity. I wanted to slow down and just get into a really tight orbit. What would this cost me? 233. 233 and 85 is less than 379. So we're going to do it. We're going to we're going to do these two burns. We're going to get into a nice tight orbit and then that way we've used we've actually used our fuel. And then we're going to plan to come down and land at sunrise at something shiny. Probably next episode, uh, or actually, no, maybe, I don't know. We'll find out. Let's go ahead and jump to the Moho ship, though, because we got his thing in 46 minutes. If only you could arrow break at Moho, we would probably be able to get home. Okay, 36 by 42 seems very reasonable to me. And um, this thing is never going to be in the sun, 
However, I think we're going to leave this guy here and we're going to jump back to Duna and we're going to do we're going to do the first landing at Duna first. I that's I have decided this episode is all going to be about landing at something shiny or dying trying, whichever happens first. Okay. Uh, one important thing is we need to control from here, not decouple here. We need to control from this guy because he is in line with the engines and not the uh, the cockpit is not. The cockpit is set up to control the um, the driving portion of our show. And we're obviously very poorly set up to burn. Um, yeah, I, I thought the reaction wheels would be able to handle it, but I'm obviously wrong with that. Yeah, oh, we can only thrust at about 20% or so and keep this. The engines are balanced for when we toss this thing because we're going to be doing a lot more burning um, without this thing attached than with it attached. Um, I could probably thrust limit the ones... Let's see which way we're going. I could thrust limit these guys, which might not be a bad idea. Let's do that. Let's thrust limit these guys down to about 50%. Whoops. Better. Okay, yeah. I can handle that. Wouldn't it be crazy if our debris came up from behind us and smacked into us? <laughs> Someday that's going to happen to me. And I'm sure I won't be ready for it when it does. Okay. I'm going to hit F5 here just in case we need to thrust limit differently. Because I'm going to go right down to 25 seconds before and then just crank it up. Yep, I can handle it. Which is all I can really ask for. Also ask that this is the tank that gets emptied, yes. I was afraid that it might empty these ones, but it looks like it's not. Yeah, not at all. We can use a little bit of fuel in here, it's just we don't have much more than six grand uh, in the thing. I, the, the early designs of this thing actually had three orange tanks, and that was like eight grand. And it was just too hard to get that, that thing landed on Duna. Whoa. Oh, we passed the maneuver note. Okay, I was like, I thought we were flipping out. 56 by 54, though. That's that's pretty much perfect. That's the best we can expect. Okay, we are in orbit. Let's go ahead and plan. I guess we're going to have to plan to over here in the dark. Burn down. This is going to be very difficult. Burn down because this is probably going to take multiple quick saves. Simply because I don't know what I'm doing. I might even have to do a quick save and then try stuff and then like note where I land and everything. Because like I said, I do not expect this to be even close to where we are. Um, in theory here, if I turn the brakes on, because we're gonna have we're gonna have these open during re-entry. If I turn the brakes on and I tell trajectories, I want to be coming in retrograde. It should be able to figure it out in theory. Um, and actually, I'm starting to think now maybe this guy. Let's go ahead and put it into body fix mode. So this is where we'll be coming down in body fixed mode. If I do this. If I do this though, I don't really want to come down at sunset is the problem. Um, but if we go plus an orbit, plus an orbit, that's really, really, really enticing. I mean, one nice thing is we've got wheels, so we can drive. One thing, though, we can't repair those wheels because we don't have a level 3 guy. I would have brought a level 3 guy if I had one. Um, in my testing, though, these wheels are, are pretty strong. I'm going to hit Z now. Now we're going to check out our trajectory. Oh, 
Okay, let's assume that trajectories is still wrong. So we're going to drop another quick save right here, and we're going to see what happens. And we are going to enter the atmosphere around here. Wow, that's going to be a long thing. Probably shouldn't have done that, uh, but we're fine. The nice thing is, is we're coming up through this alley, so wherever we land, we're going to be in a shallow area. Um, we do not need this anymore. We didn't use any of the fuel in these guys. Just making 100% sure I don't need to transfer this fuel out. Yep, okay. I don't really want that thing to be behind us because we're probably less aerodynamic than it is. So I'm going to wait until it's flipping around and it goes forward because we're we should be going slower than it will when the time comes also not going to be in four times time warp when the time comes looks like a look it's holding a parasol <laughs> okay we're going to toss this thing there it goes yeah, see, we've got 6480, so we can we can use 480 units of fuel getting down, um, which is nice because that means that means if we're coming down at you know 12 to, to 20 meters per second, I can hit the gas in the last couple seconds. Okay, we're starting to really get bit by the atmosphere now. Still hasn't moved our our projected path, which is very good. Yeah, see, our path is already starting to pull back now. So I think I'm actually going to turn the brakes off for the time being. Because <laughs> I, I, I would like to land somewhere in this depression here. I might even consider for a moment burning up like this. There we go. Yeah, that only used like, what, 60 units of fuel? Where are we? We're right here. Okay. I think when I get here or so, I'm going to uh, put the brakes back on. And if it seems like I don't know what I'm doing, um, it's mostly because I don't actually know what I'm doing. Just looking for my debris. There it is. <laughs> don't actually want to be in target mode, though. Yeah, my debris projected path. That's pretty funny. Yeah, we're doing pretty good, actually. I don't see any way we're not going to land in that... Uh, in that area okay we need to get over this ridge here before we start coming down to land and I, I don't see any way that wouldn't happen but I still don't want to pull the shoots until until that time comes and I mean they're they're, they're all red and yellow anyway and I just realized I never tweaked these oh at least these three big ones need to be high uh-oh, this is this is potentially game ending. I wish there was a way to say tweak all parachutes to be this way. I mean the min pressure set, which is basically when they're gonna be going anyway. But I'm gonna try to tweak some of these parachutes. These ones already had a high altitude because they were they were put on before. See I, I redesigned this whole center area and I totally forgot to, to change the chutes. So we're gonna we're we're actually gonna be having the shoots deploy at multiple different altitudes, which I think is probably a good thing. There's our there's our target. Our drogues are ready to deploy. And I think we're just gonna hit the space bar here. Nothing's gonna actually deploy yet because we're too high up. Thinking about hitting the engines. Um 
Yeah, we could burn 100 meters per sec, or 100 units of fuel. Get down to 6,300. 6,250. It's not actually changing much, so we're, we're going to resolve ourselves to driving a bit. We don't want to slow down too much because we want to we want to make sure we have a lot of uh, we want to make sure we have a lot of horizontal velocity until the parachutes really bite. Okay, the drogues should be coming out any second here. I don't remember during my testing when it was. It was somewhere under ten, I think. Looks like we might be coming down on a on a hill that is coming up to meet us. Okay, we are under ten thousand. I would really like. There's the drogues. And that will slow us down pretty much right away. Oh, the main ones even even went and didn't rip. Okay, everything's everything's yellow or red, so we're good. We just need all the rest of the shoots to go. There they go. Oh, that's what I didn't want that. Oh, don't. Oh, wait. Am I in? I'm not in time warp. Okay. There go the rest of the shoots. And then we have more that are going to come out at 1,000 meters off the ground. So I think we're good. We're 35 kilometers away, so it's going to be quite a drive. Um, and also, I just realized it is almost time for me to, to uh, get ready for work. There go the rest of the shoots. What are we? What are we slowing down here? 14.2. Really? All those shoots opened, and they didn't slow us down one meter per second. Being a little daring going at three meter, three times time warp, but um, this will take forever otherwise. According to Kerbal Engineer, we are seven, 1,700 meters off the ground. When we get to about 50, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit the gas. There's no quick saving in atmosphere here. When we get to 1,002, actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to slow down time warp when we get to 1,000 because we're going to have a lot of parachutes deploying at that time. There's all the fully deploying, and that's going to slow us down. And also even us out, which is perfect. Yeah, I tested this guy in Kerbin a bit to make sure the parachutes were even. But I didn't know how much they would slow us down on Duna. And now I know. So we've still got we've still got 240 meters per second, which we've seen at a full burn. We we have a lot of burn. Our thrust to weight is 1.71. Currently, it's going to go up when we drop all the garbage, but we can't drop the garbage until we've landed. Traveling only 11 meters per second, which is very reasonable. I'm actually going to turn the computer on. There's my alarm at the worst possible time. <laughs> well, not the worst possible time. The worst possible time would have been like right about now okay i'm gonna hold retrograde we're at 100 meters off the ground in a second i'm gonna hit z at 50. and we are touched down on duna And all we have to do is maintain stability for 10 seconds. Bam! We just got a big contract. $2 million. Okay, let's get another BS contract and test this engine. Going to hit F5 here. Might as well do that before we do anything. Let's go ahead and test this engine. There's another BS contract. <laughs> $651,000 in 14 science. And then now let's just toss this thing aside because we don't want it anymore. And then let's control from here. Let's go into docking mode, I guess. Not that it matters. Let's turn the brakes off. And we are ready to drive, I think. Uh, why are the engines not 
Maybe we can't be in docking mode. Let's go into staging mode. Okay, now the motor's working. I have no idea what was up with that. I also don't want to hit this thing when the time comes. You know, at full bore, we do not have the power to keep that up. But I think just driving forward will be fine. Now, we're still losing a little bit of power. But I think as the sun sets, I just realized that the sun is setting. Um, and this is going to be an hour-long drive, give or take. It's weird. As I'm driving, I'm, I find that if I turn left and right, like, look at these wheels here. Let me right-click the wheel. See the motor here? If I'm going left, it's at full. If I'm going forward, it's at 7%. Um, actually, it's not even 7% because it's normally 180. So it's at, like, 4%. This wheel's very similar. It's at 7.8, and then if I go right, it's at 180, and they, they don't turn. I, th I thought I remember these wheels turning, but apparently they don't. And so if I if I go trade between left and right, look at me accelerating. Seven, going eight now. If I just hold forward, I'm actually decelerating because I'm going slightly uphill. It's just really weird that that I can't get full power unless I'm turning left and right. Um, honestly, I don't use these huge wheels that often. This is like the second or third time in my entire KSP career that I've used them. It's just kind of weird that they, that they do that. Um, when the other wheels definitely do turn, uh, I don't know if that's new. Like I said, I haven't actually used wheels a lot since, uh, since they got changed. Um, I am really enjoying these wheels. They're a lot better. Sadly, I missed it. Um, I didn't record it, but I did actually get this guy up to about 30 meters per second and he flipped and I was able to, to land him flat back on the wheels and then just keep going straight. It was pretty cool. Um, but anyway, uh, we are, I don't know how close to this thing we are. I've saved and reloaded the game. We're six minutes away. So I or seven minutes. Now we're slowing down because we're heading up this hill. But uh, I'll see you. Um, actually, let's hold on. Can we see it now? No, still can't see it. It's over that hill. So I will be back uh, when I can see it. Oh man, we are out of power. If I if I just go straight, also if I just go straight, um, we actually gain power, which is nice. Um, and I wonder if do the, wonder if the wheels are automatically setting themselves to only be as strong as the power that's available to them. But I don't think so. That seems that seems excessive. But this this last hill has kind of bested my ship. I have a feeling the moment we crest the hill, we will see the thing though. And I don't know if you noticed it, the, uh, all the parachutes are back together. Daniel hopped out. Uh, we, we actually completely ran out of power, and, and just while I was waiting for the solar panels to recharge, Daniel hopped out and did all the... Uh, looks like it's over the next rise, so it's going to be a little bit before we get back to the thing, but at least we're heading kind of downhillish now. Uh, but anyway, yeah, Daniel, Daniel hopped out and repacked all the chutes as the only person who has any experience at all repacking parachutes. <laughs> because he went to Minmus. Um, and is that it? I think that's it. We see something on the horizon. A mere three and a half kilometers away. Which at the rate we're going is going to be four and a half minutes. Definitely would have brought more solar panels and or batteries. Were I to do this again, I also definitely am glad that rocks are still not solid objects. <laughs> well, we are within two kilometers of it, and we just have uh, discovered a very familiar-looking rock formation. I'm doing this is the game, not the contract pack. Look, as I filled up my battery, and I'm already at a third, merely because I tried to accelerate to five meters per second. Yeah, this poor little car does not have the oomph to do what I want. Luckily, we're almost there. Sadly, we landed a lot farther down, <laughs> closer to sea level than the uh, formation itself. Not at all convinced that we're going to be able to make it up that hill. So I'm going to try to hit it on the side here. And then just drive it sideways. I just realized I've had the science thing off for who knows how long. What could it be? It looks like 
a female Kerbal Torso. No, just joking. Of course, we're out of electric power, so I can't even stop. <laughs> As we <laughs> all this way, and we're going to drive right by it. <laughs> Eventually, the, the car will stop, I promise. Bam! Okay, Francois, you have the honors. Hop on out. What is this thing? What could it be? Oh, Gina has something to say. No, Francois has something to say. I'm not sure what they're talking about. This doesn't look like a Kerbal at all. <laughs> Oops, it is solid. That totally looks like a Kerbal. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Oh, you are uh, floating over it, though. So they fixed parts of it, but not the whole thing. And you do not want to look at me, do you? That might be the screenshot here. <laughs> Anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching this. Uh, next time we're going to uh, Moho to, to find the Mohole or whatever is there. And then we're going to come back here to find something shiny. I hope you're looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to doing it. I'm HMP and I will, as always, talk at you later.